The world is visited by many strange and curious phenomena. In Japan, when such mysteries occurred, some people would say they were the work of mysterious creatures called yokai. Even now, perhaps there are yokai lurking in the shadows of modern Japan. Lend an ear to their stories, and they might just remind you of nearly forgotten truths. Join us on a journey to explore the secrets of yokai. In Japan, summer is the season of festivals. One exciting feature of many festivals is a parade centered around mikoshi, palanquins in which a deity rides. In the parade, there is a special kind of festival float. These immense floats with the body of a bull and the head of an oni, or ogre, are known as ushioni. The ushioni's appearance is limited to Ehime Prefecture on the island of Shikoku. Even there, it's found only in the southern area. The Ushioni appears only in a certain region, and moreover, its appearance differs slightly from place to place. I visited the town of Akehama, where the Ushioni continues to be celebrated to this day. Okimura Satoshi is a regional expert on the Ushioni. This is the imposing visage used in festivals. It's made by pasting together thick layers of Japanese paper. The Ushioni appears every year at a festival held in the autumn. The most impressive feat is the nimble spinning of its 400 kilogram form. In all the areas it appears, the Ushioni has the role of leading the procession, purifying the streets. It also travels from home to home, warding off evil. To local residents, it brings good fortune. ですか例えばまあ恐ろしい顔してるから妖怪みたいなものですか鬼みたいなものですかそれともあの神様でしょうか神様のまああの下辺と言いますかはいまあ地元の人からすれば自分たちの周りもあのまあ払い清めてくれ
I first saw the Ushioni at a festival some 10 years ago. It piqued my interest, and after some research, I realized that apparently the Ushioni was once considered a kind of yokai. What exactly is an Ushioni? I decided to take the bull by the horns, as it were, and see what I could find out about this puzzling creature. When did Ushioni first become part of festivals in the Uwajima area? By looking at old documents and picture scrolls, we can confirm that it appeared at least as early as the Edo period. But the Ushioni as yokai may have an even older history. The oldest known reference to an Ushioni is from over a thousand years ago in Sei Shonagon's famous collection of musings and essays called Makuru no Soshi, or the Pillow Book. There she gives Ushioni as one example in a list of things with terrifying names. It's not until the Edo period that we first get visual images of Ushioni, like this version by Sawaki Sushi, an Edo period artist. At first glance, it may look like a spider or a crab, but the terrifying countenance and the horns on the head indicate a relationship with an oni and a bull. It's this kind of image that was most common and probably the kind of image that comes to mind when people think of an Ushioni. In addition, there are narratives associated with Ushioni that come in many different patterns. Let us begin by tracing one Ushioni legend that has been passed down to the present day. The town of Mugi, located in southern Tokushima Prefecture. In this village nestled among mountains, the legend of the Ushioni is still recounted. When Nishizawa Hideo was a child, he heard the local legend of the Ushioni many times from his father. The Ushioni was described as having a monstrous face and hulking bovine body. It was said that when it descended from the mountain, it would cause chaos by attacking villagers and their livestock. A skilled hunter named Heishiro climbed the mountain with rifle in hand, determined to vanquish the beast. Soon after he began climbing, it's said that Heishiro spotted the Ushioni atop a flat boulder and wasted no time in taking his shot. It struck the Ushioni, sending it tumbling into the valley below, where it's said to have drawn its last breath beneath a waterfall. The location believed to be the Ushioni's final resting place can be accessed even to this day. After a 20 minute trek up the mountain, the sound of flowing water can be heard. This pool is where the Ushioni is thought to have fallen. 
According to the legend, for seven days and seven nights, blood continued to flow from the beast's body. But after drifting some five kilometers downriver, the red stream suddenly halted before Heishiro's abode. <laughs> there are other locations where such legends are still known. Another waterfall flows among the mountains of Susami, a town in Wakayama Prefecture. The Ushioni here was known to devour the shadows of residents. Ueno Denme heard about the creature from his grandmother. In the legend told here, a man was harvesting grass near the waterfall when the Ushioni emerged and consumed his shadow, making short work of him. They say that when the terrified villagers tried providing the beast with offerings, such as sake, it no longer thirsted for shadows. Ever since he heard the tell from his grandmother, Ueno has kept his distance from the waterfall. Many of the legends of Ushioni are set in areas associated with water, like, like this place here. What does this association with water mean? And in fact, why is it that Ushioni threatened humans? There are many possible explanations and no absolutely definitive answer, of course. One idea is simply that cattle are so important to human culture and so intimate to human society that inversely, they can be imagined as something fearful and dangerous. It is thought that in Japan, cattle were first kept as livestock some 2,000 years ago. In the millennia that followed, cows became important partners in daily life. Their most essential role was to shoulder the burdens of human labor, to plow the fields and carry heavy loads. but they had yet another role to play as sacrifices to the gods. In fact, in cultures throughout the world, there were customs in which cattle were sacrificed to appeal to the gods for a successful growing season or to calm wrathful deities in the wake of a natural disaster. Particularly in agricultural communities, such as Japan, it was essential to appeal to the gods for good weather and for a bountiful harvest. People pray to the gods for much needed rain. In Japan, it seems that one such custom entailed the sacrificing of cattle as a sacred offering. Ushia Valley, located in the town of Shirahama, was one of the places this custom used to be carried out. Mm -hmm. 
つけたの神だものを見合ったとただ私のおばあさんが見たのその光景を気持ち悪い永谷明らず grandmother was among those who observed the cow's head being brought to the basin The head was concealed from view and taken into the valley with members of several neighboring villages joining in the procession. Once the head reached the basin, a prayer was offered up, and then it was plunged into the waters. Ushia, which itself means cattle pen, was in fact known by another name. Folklorist Yanagita Kunio included it in one of his compilations of local history. Ushia Valley, also known as Ushioni Valley. The act of sacrificing cattle to the gods is said to have been practiced in various regions of Japan and for a variety of purposes, not limited to making rain. It's said that the spread of Buddhist thought and other historical changes may have altered perceptions of these sacrifices and been a factor in the creation of the Ushioni. This has been suggested by Omoto Takahisa, museum curator and one of the foremost experts on the Ushioni. え、日本のあの中で、え、その牛鬼っていうものができていく背景として、ま、そういったその牛を殺す、牛を食べるっていうことに対する忌避からの、え、カウンターとしての牛の妖怪の成立、牛を恐ろしきものとして考えるっていう
It was because cattle were so invaluable to villagers that they offered them to the gods. At the same time, a sense of guilt spread due to conflict with Buddhist precepts against killing. And in hell resided the bull-headed demon Gozu. These details are like the pieces of an elaborate puzzle. Assembling them as best we can reveals a vague yet compelling glimpse of the yokai that would come to be known as the Ushioni. And yet, one question remains. How did this fearsome yokai, the terrifying Ushioni, come to be revered in the festival processions of southern Ehime as a guardian deity? We know that the Ushioni has appeared in festivals in this region since at least as early as the mid-Edo period. I suspected that another tradition emerging here around the same time might offer us a hint. In Ehime Prefecture's southern city of Uwajima, just as well known as the Ushioni, is the sport of bullfighting. The type of bullfighting practiced in Uwajima is a test of natural strength between two bulls. Just like the celebrated Ushioni of the festival, the two powerful bulls attempting to push each other out of the ring evoke a sense of local pride for residents of Uwajima. In the traditional style of bullfighting, a handler known as a seko stands alongside each bull. ま、聞き目というか、そういう反応はあの感じてるんですか。ま、僕は感じ取りますけどね。なので普段こう世話する人がそういうあのもう勝つか負けるかぐらいのあのま、勝負の境目のとこで、そこについて声かけると多分声も
Perhaps it was precisely because the people of Uwajima trained these powerful bulls and fought alongside them that they came to celebrate a frightening yokai like the Ushioni as a guardian deity. Ushioni truly is a complex and confusing yokai, or rather, not a single yokai, but a loosely associated set of ideas and images. In the context of festival, it pacifies and protects. But in legend, Ushioni can be characterized as a vicious monster. In the guise of Gozu, a bovine-headed demon is the gatekeeper of hell. And in the bull ring, a cherished animal becomes a violent warrior. It is all but impossible to fit these various pieces of the puzzle together to get a coherent single image or single definition. But perhaps it doesn't matter. All these manifestations reflect the complex human relationship with cattle. For centuries, humans have employed cattle to help farm the land. But at the same time, cattle as animals have retained their association with the natural world. In a sense, they occupy an in-between space where they act as mediators between animals and humans, between nature and culture. Perhaps in the end, all we can say is that each iteration of Ushioni, whether friendly or frightening, reflects in some way this multifaceted, sometimes paradoxical position. What exactly is the Ushioni? I began this leg of my journey with the intent to answer this question. But despite my best efforts, I could only present a few limited interpretations. After all, yokai are nebulous beings that, almost by definition, cannot be easily captured or understood. Perhaps that's one reason we find them so fascinating and why we always want to know more.